Hi, my name is Franz. Uh, you know, I play uh, in some leagues, you know, Mega City, uh, On Point, uh, you know, Free Agent League, and, uh, you know, uh, other leagues as well, you know, throughout Toronto. Philip Beloso, a league organizer since uh, 2007 for Victoria Invitational Basketball. And that, that tournament's coming up, very, approach very these. Very soon. And that's the one we're excited about, because to my knowledge, there hasn't been a broadcast of Filipino amateur basketball mm -hmm. in Canada ever. So we're going to be the first ones to do that. The championship games of Open and also under 18, I believe we're doing. But we'll talk with Philip later on in this segment. Let's go first to France. France prepared, with a, prepared his highlight. Show us or tell us what did you choose out of all the highlights that you could have chosen. All right, the, the highlight I chose was uh, one of the first plays of, um, I believe, the first game. Uh, LeBron stole the ball, and uh, he was able to pass it to Kyrie. And um, LeBron was, you know, um, telling Kyrie to uh, hoist it up through the backboard. So, um, you know, he did a left-hand uh, dunk. And, um, you know, that was a you know, big play. So that was dominated by LeBron. Check let's, this out. Let's check this out. Oh, so we got Kyrie coming off the backboard. Left hand. Left handed. And he's not left handed, he's right handed too, which is pretty good. The crazy dunk. <laughs> you got the, That's insane. You got the cutout of LeBron. And it went on at 10. Well, LeBron pretty much put his stamp, you know, showing his dominance. Kyrie with a pass right there. Uh, that was a 10 2 run too. And that was the start of the demise of the Toronto Raptors. <laughs> After this, Toronto pretty much got shook the whole game. I don't know. They didn't come back. The yeah. bronze just to, too much Crazy. of a beast there. Left hand. How long do you guys think uh, LeBron can keep this up? Oh, people say he has a 19-year-old body with the, like a 40-year-old. Well, not. Yeah, that's crazy. He's he's almost he's in the late 30s. Yeah. And he has a 19-year-old type of body. He can go for a, maybe a really takes care 40. of his body well. And at the same time, he said he wants to play with his son too. You know, I mean, that's crazy. No possible. Because <laughs> you can see, you see how Both Vince Carter... 12, 12, 13 yeah. years old now? Mm. Yeah. Because Vince Carter is playing right now, he's in, in his 40s, so compare that to LeBron. LeBron could probably play until he's probably 45. Oh, yeah. I, can, sure. I think. Easily. Mm. How old are you, K. Philip? Me? <laughs> I'm old <laughs> enough. Play <laughs> oh, can't play anymore. But I can organize. I can help out organize. That. That's my... Uh, that's my uh, what do you call that? That's my mission right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Once exactly, once you're finished, you know, playing, you have to find other ways to use that game you mm -hmm. love to do something, and you do it for the community. So yeah, let's talk about the Victoria Cup. How did you get involved with it? Well, in 2007, uh, the uh, Filipino Center Toronto asked me what they can do with the community, and I said, you know, the only thing I know is sports and basketball. Is everybody's looking where to play and where they can play and organize basketball. So this is how we started in 2007 with uh, 24 teams. Mm -hmm. And since then, this is our 11th year. This coming May uh, 19, 2021, the we always do this at the Victoria weekend. Mm -hmm. And this year we have 69 registered teams wow. confirmed, 132 games. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be now three days, mm -hmm. uh, starting Friday at four o'clock. And then Saturday all day and Sunday all day. And again, uh, the only regrets I have is right now I have like almost 10 teams waiting on the side to get wow. in. And it is a good problem to have, but <laughs> yeah. you know, I just can uh, accommodate only so many mm -hmm. because of the time that, you know, the time restraint from the uh, hoop dome. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how hard is it like to try to get like as much teams to play in, that, in the league? Cause like, I know a lot of kids since 2007, they really, really want to play in this uh, tournament. Like, how, how is it? Is it has it been very difficult? I think uh, we're doing something. Uh, we're doing something right. Mm -hmm. First of all, like uh, you know, we this is not a fund uh, to make money. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to uh, the the lowest cost, the entry fee as possible, uh, and then we give them at least guaranteed three games, and everybody's on the playoff. So that's another plus, you know, because it doesn't matter in the elimination if you're in the if you're in the bottom, you still got a chance to win the to win it all. Yeah, because like, you, like you, a losers round consolation type of prizes and stuff like that. No, no, I mean you're in the playoff. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. In the playoff of the second round, right. so everybody's in the playoff, and also uh, uh, we have a 
names that played in our league before. The first player that we have, MVP, in our tournament in 2007, guess who? Who was it? Was it Franz? It's Franz, right? No. It's Franz was a shooter. No. Shooting. <laughs> Three points at Franz. I heard about the name Matthew Wright and Norbert Torres. Oh, They're the they two first MVP <laughs> in our uh, Victoria 2007, the very first year that oh. we had at T.L. Kennedy. Mm. Right. So Matthew Wright and, uh, and Norbert, uh, Norbert Torres. And then... Uh, it's come uh, a long way because you said it's, it was at T.L. Kennedy, which was... was right. The gym was not that, not that great. No, we had, but now where is it, where is it well, being held now? We have... Uh, now we, uh, we, we went to Hoop Dome for three years. And then for the... La, uh, we, then we went to uh, Centennial College and Seneca College. Now we're back to Hoop Dome again. Because uh, we want to accommodate as many players as we can, but again, it's the number of gyms that we need to, to rent. That's, it's really a headache mm -hmm. for uh, renting all these gyms. Mm -hmm. What would you say, um, I know the opening ceremonies are, is it on Saturday or Friday? We always do the opening ceremony on the mm -hmm. uh, 7.30 on Saturday. Mm -hmm. every, every, for the last 10 years, yeah. we have the uh, luxury of having the uh, Raptor mascot mm -hmm. coming in. Uh, this year I was talking to the mascot and uh, he cannot assure because of the uh, playoff uh, situation. Oh, yeah. But hopefully they will still uh, join us for the 11th year in a row. Yeah. And also I have the confirmation just today uh, from Mayor John Torrey. Mm. He will be joining us. He's playing basketball or what is well, <laughs> he? Always, he is, uh, this, a shock we always there. have a support yeah. from the mayor and yeah, which yeah. is very good too. You mm. know, this encourages the kids and the parents to to uh, play harder because they know there's the support from the leaders in the community. So mm. it's really how, nice. How important is it to attend the opening ceremonies? I know it's sometimes hard to get people to attend the opening ceremonies and I know there's a lot of speeches that go on, but why Why should people you know, come to that opening ceremony? Cause well, first of all, you know, this is a once in a year tournament. Yeah. And secondly, you want to be there early. Also the, the Raptors presence. They always, mm. every year we have giveaways, we have the Raptors, Rap, uh, Raptors then dancers mm -hmm. and the mascot and of course not too many speeches we having mm. and then uh, this year again if you get a most representative most represented team mm -hmm. you'll get five hundred twenty five dollars in cash mm -hmm. wow. okay a minimum of 40 players in a club but who had the most numbers of uh, players joining the uh, parade or in the opening ceremony mm -hmm. will get five hundred twenty five dollars in cash what would you do with five hundred? You know, you not know, wake up for seven thirty in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> no. What's your What's your favorite thing about hosting Victoria Cup? I know because you now we, we were there last year. It was our mm -hmm. inaugural it's centennial. Centennial. We centennial. Were at centennial. It was yeah. a very one of our very first tournaments that we covered. What was What's your favorite part, like covering well, or like even organizing the whole thing together? Well, again, uh, because you heard about all this uh, intercity, Naba, Pibna, mm -hmm. all this, uh, and I know only a few people can go in there, can join in there. Some of the uh, teams, they just selected the, uh, the best in their, in, in, their, in their group. This one is like an organized uh, tournament that anybody who wants to join can join. You know, there's no, it's up to the club, it's up to the coaches who they want to put in, but this is opportunity, and this is only in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And imagine, in Toronto, we have like 900 kids who wants to play this game of basketball and, and also watching these kids grow up mm -hmm. imagine right. i started with matthew we started with matthew right and now where he is right he's playing professional ball in the philippines so he's in the pba you know friends are you going to be at the victoria cup will we see you there what's, oh, what's the deal be there you know it's always you know nice to see friends you know tito mm. and family so uh yeah and a old, good, uh, a good big and family gathering <laughs> and around sports and could you feel how will how will you be where will you be in victoria cup are you gonna be running around like what's how will people get to, get to see you I, get to i i I've always i'm all the praise you know mm -hmm. like uh i'm sometimes i'm a scorer sometimes uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the referees <sometimes>. referees you know <laughs> so.